Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. So what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with our great brother, Daryl Addison. Now, you remember those inter- those um, advertisements that you see? I was talking about Torpedo Pot, right? Teaching you how to grow your own food, which is something that's very, very important. You know, they're talking about possible food shortages. And so we are bringing a solution to that possible problem. You always need to be ready for You really need to have the ability to start looking for a brother like, like Daryl here, right? To grow your food. So... Brother, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much, Mr. Scott. I appreciate being here. All right. So, you know, Daryl, tell people, you know, about Torpedo Pot, you know, how you got into (laughs) it, because I I know it's something that um, in in this digital age, a lot of people not really get into that, but some of us actually going back to that. So can you tell us about it? Yeah, you know, are not into, well, there's a lot of things. I, I can't say not into gardening. But everybody's into health. Everybody's into nutrition. Everybody's into herbs. Everybody's into living healthy from garden to table. And so you're absolutely correct. I mean, we, in theory, we're not there. But in, in practice, we're not there. But in theory, everybody's trying to get there. The question is, how do we get there? And so Peter Pot helps to, to bridge that gap. And how does Torpedo Pot bridge that gap? Well... Let's say, for instance, if, if you were, let's, let's cover the whole spectrum. Like, for instance, when you go outside and garden, we realize that over 50%, all of the houses in the United States, the average gardener spends $400 in tools just for growing his food. And then when you start to look at the amount of work that has to go into growing it, the fertilizing and the growing and the going out and weeding and watering, it, it just builds an enormous bill. And so, you know, everybody's shunned off. But what Torpedo Pot does, it grows your food for you. So all you do is walk up to the planter, you throw your seeds in, and Torpedo Pot literally grows your food for you. You don't have to do anything else. Other than, do you have to water? Like no, before? not at all. Phil, I'm glad you asked that question. It's a fully automated system. Matter of fact, it's the best growing system in the world. As there is no other growing system in the world that can produce the amount of food that your torpedo pot can produce and give it to you in the most healthiest way possible. Okay, so when you start you start off, it grows it what from the seed to it germinates till you start seeing your plant. Uh, do you have to transfer uh, the plant once it kind of outgrows the torpedo pot to something else, or you have other big planters out there? I, I love what you just said. Because let's, let's pick that apart because these are all good questions. And the first word that you, you put in that first sentence is grow. The first thing I tell all of my clients is that, hmm, so you're growing food, right? So if someone, when you were 13 years old, if someone grabbed you on your head and held you back, could they hold you back from growing? No. No, no, sir, not at all. There's nothing nobody can do. So growing is an inherent part of you, not part of the environment. The environment provides the sustainability. What the torpedo pod does, it realizes that humans can't grow food. They never could. We don't have the education to grow food. Nobody can build together a pepper. There's nothing in history that can do that. So we need to understand what are the conditions, what are the environments, and what's really growing our food. So part of our technology is understanding that, that we don't do it. So you can't grow anything. So we want to just eliminate it all together. People have green thumbs. I'm great that you have green thumbs, but you're not growing food. You're sustaining it in an environment so that it can grow. And that's what Torpedo Pot does. It creates an environment for the microflora inside that planter to kick off and grow your food like you've never seen before in your life. 
All right, so we, mm -hmm. let me ask you a question about okay, mm -hmm. can you provide the you know difference with you know, let's say a person using torpedo pod, okay, and let's talk about like the seeds themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, the seeds, I know they got GMO out there as well. Mm -hmm. So, what is the difference in the way that grows, like the original seeds versus GMO seed? Well, to tell you the truth, the GMO seeds, it is assumed, you know, I talk to a lot of people who have uh, patents on, on different things. And when you mm -hmm. look at the GMO seeds, you ask, them, what is your patent for the seeds that you have? And you're going to find out that most patents uh, are really for the finished product. The, the process of growing, nobody knows. As a matter of fact, when you take that seed and throw it into a pot and you've altered that, that seed, the environment alters that seed also. But as that seed starts to grow, the properties that you have built into that seed starts to change based upon the environment. So a lot of the seeds that we've had trees that have, uh, there are miniature trees that have produced a small amount of apples, let them go for a couple of years and you'll find how tall they will grow and how many apples they produce. So we don't know the direction that nature will go because only God knows that. Nobody, no man knows how things will work because we don't have that technology. We can only look at things and say, oh, gee whiz, you're going to grow X, Y, and Z. But the torpedo pot, it doesn't matter what seeds you have. If it's GMO, uh, fill, or non-GMO, it's going to grow those seeds only because it creates an environment where they're in the soil. People think that if I give a plant soil and I throw my seeds and I gave them the best soil in the world, I have some of the best gardeners create the best uh, soil in the world with all types of peat moss and nutrients and everything else. But I always tell them is that um, even though you're doing all this, it is the plant that goes down and creates the environment for itself. You can't create an environment for a plant. The plant has to do it itself if it's going to survive. One of the ways that a plant doesn't survive and it grows, but it grows on your time is when we start throwing fertilizers at it. The plant is embedded with the soil and it derives its nutrition. And that's how it just starts to grow. But remember the same, when I throw fertilizers at that plant, it disables the plant's ability to interact with the soil. And so what I end up doing is feeding the plant intravenously to make it look green and big and everything else. But the fungus that's in the soil that's used to grow the plants, that environment is not there. So you're eating food, food is a generic term now, but it may not be nutritious food. Does that make sense, sir? Yes, that, that definitely makes plenty of sense. Um, so basically what you're saying is you need to grow it the way God intended, because God didn't create fertilizer. That's a man created. And short, you, you nailed it right on about it. Are these synthetic chemicals and things that are being used? You know, we take our, 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 our uh, fruit. We take a pepper that we've grown, put it on the table. Take a crab pepper that you get from the supermarket and put it on the table. And you'll see the de decay and both of those uh, pieces of fruit happen differently. Death is important. Understanding death is important to understand how we live. So the, the decay happens differently. And one of the reasons why the decay happens differently, because in the, in the plant which you've introduced those fertilizers, you change that composition of that fruit. And when you change the composition of that fruit, you realize what, what a bug's like. Bug likes bugs. You see bugs around dead animals, dead plants, dead humans, whatever it is. So the bugs are more attractive because now it's not uh, the it does, this fruit doesn't have the constituency it had uh, a while ago. So, that, yeah, there's, it's the torpedo pot grows your food. You throw your seeds in, Phil. We've had one, 10 planters, and just going to blow your mind. We had a guy called me from Canada, the, the top official in Canada, wanting to have our planters. We walked in and we put 10 seeds in one planter. Oh, excuse me, we put 30 seeds in one planter. And we have 10 planters. From those 30 seeds, who we were able to grow fully automated, no human invention, uh, intervention, 600 tomatoes. Nothing in the world can do anything like that. And, and see, and see, you you the man that, that, that could help with, with the, because uh, you know, a lot of black, black communities, we have what you call food deserts. So are they giving us some of the worst fruits and vegetables? And, you know, back when I was growing up, which, you know, I say that like I'm freaking 90, uh -huh. but, you know, just, just even in the, during the eighties and nineties, when I see my grandmother and, and grandfather, you know, they would grow food, trade food with different people, you know, in the neighborhood, like I said, my grandfather would grow okra and onions and jalapeno yep. 
and he actually grow watermelon. I'm talking about watermelon with the seeds, not uh-huh. just new stuff with no seeds at GMO. That's why I always I'm mean, the first time I even had a watermelon like that. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> you know, and, and my grandfather's watermelons are so sweet. They was, I mean, like they were blood red. Those guys, they knew how to grow food. They were yeah. experts at growing food. But yeah. sir, Phil, I want you to pay close attention. Please, even though these ladies and gentlemen were expert at growing food, we have to ask ourselves what has changed. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why torpedo pot is one of is going to change everything, it's a game changer, is because guess what? We've contaminated the earth to such a degree that it could never, unless it re, it is, is a recovery process, it could never grow the same food your grandparents had. Just imagine how much damage we've done to the earth. Every time we cut on our washing machine, the fibers from the hairs go into the water. When we drink our tea and our coffee in the morning and when we uh, 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 urinate, all of that stuff goes back into the streams and the lakes. I mean, we've just literally polluted everything. So the ability to grow like we've done before, you know, it won't be the same unless we take drastic actions to change, you know, how we live. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, they, that's, they, the, the people that's running the earth right now, all they know is pollution, pollution, pollution. And, <laughs> and the only thing I think that could purify the earth as well, you know, I mean, the Bible teaches about that, purified by fire. But that's, that's a totally different conversation. But, but what we can't do in the meantime, especially when you, you talk about possible food shortages, mm. you know, y'all need to be hitting our brother up with his torpedo pod. He should have a problem getting them to y'all. That's how many of y'all y'all should be ordering right now because y'all need to start growing your own food. Like, shoot, my grandmother uh, would grow green onions at the house mm. and, and like say, well, I'll go with green onions for it. And them green onions were so were stronger in, mm. in, in taste and smell than anything they had in their grocery store. You nailed it. it. As a matter of fact, Phil, if you don't mind, I know I, I bought your book. I've been reading it. I've been doing all great things about it. I've only got to the second chapter, so don't crucify me yet. But mm. part of it is being that independent. Yeah. It's changing the way we think. And so I even myself, I catch myself saying all the time, I'm going outside to grow. But let's take a step back. Part of the problem is because if you look, if I, I would say, Phil, let's go outside and plant a garden together. I say, geez, Phil, what tools would you like to carry outside for us to plant a garden together? What tools do we need? Yeah, most people say we definitely need uh, some some shovels, maybe a tiller in some instances. Yeah, um, we would definitely need. Um, I don't know if we're gonna do a uh, one in the ground, or we're gonna do one that's you know we put in a, in a extended you know uh, what's that thing extended like pots? I guess it's that little square thing. I forgot the name. You know that technology. You know the <laughs> name. Pot or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we do one like that. I don't right, know like, right. what like it depends on what what we're doing, but definitely we're gonna need some. Uh, Definitely either either tiller shovels, definitely the seeds, and uh probably some good cold waters and and, and, and brotherly <laughs> brotherly uh, uh knowledge. You nailed it, you nailed it. But what I want to share with you is that the tools that I ask everybody, including you, mm-hmm. um, what do we grow with? Those are the same tools that were used in ancient Egypt. It only shows you how far we progressed in agriculture. Mm-hmm. Genetic research is no progression in agriculture. That's changing the uh, the, the uh, potential of the of the fruit to meet now our new demands. That lasts longer, longer shelf life, doesn't retard over a period of time, grows faster. These are all demands that we put genetically modify our food, because our food was perfect before we start genetically modify. But back to what you were saying, yeah, your your parents and all the tools that you mentioned from ancient Egypt. We don't grow cars and drive horses from ancient Egypt, but we need to understand that this whole industry, I have people calling me, grow, Mr. Addison, teach me how to grow, grow cannabis, teach me how to grow food. Uh, we want to sell your pots in, in Africa and Canada because and the reason why I'm saying that is because the new technologies right now, now just imagine every tool you said is going to be thrown away. We don't need shovels. We don't need trout. We don't need spades. We don't need all that stuff. Tellers. Underground, $400 a year is what we spend in that. All that is thrown away. All you need to do is have a torpedo pot. You throw your soil in. You throw your seeds in. You turn it on. You set it. And then you go on vacation. And you don't come back to this room. That's how easy this is. Phil, you would love it. Yeah, and see, a guy like myself that sit in and forget it thing, that's that. I love that. I love that 100%. I 
And um, like I said, I, I'm I'm definitely gonna get some some torpedo pods myself because I want to. If anything, I want to grow like cilantro and grow uh, you know your your chives and grow yep. green onions and just things like that you use to cook with. Because like I said, we, one thing we did talk about in the book is you know being self sufficient and getting away from the way these folks are doing things because yeah. we got to grow our own food. I mean, we can't keep depending on these people because when they have food shortages it's because we depended on those people and yeah. then now we looking at them like what you going to do to help feed us now you know good well when it's a food shortage white folks going to get the food first not you and me <laughs> well i think you you said a very good point and just imagine and i, I want to throw this out to you to your viewers and you dude, you hit it right on the head you said something you said what are they going to do to feed us uh uh who am i then I gotta wait for somebody to feed me now. Mm -hmm. I ain't wait for nobody to feed me. I can walk outside my right my house right now. I have in ten planters. I'm growing a thousand peppers. I'm growing six hundred tomatoes. I'm growing five hundred pea pods. Nobody has to feed me. I take care of myself, and that's what I want people to learn to do. Stop relying on other people to do things for you because you can't make money and build industry that way. You have to find a way to do it yourself. Torpedo pot not only grows your food, but the volumes of food that we're talking about right now, we have what is called an agricultural blockchain, which we're going to take these planters and put them in every house in the United States of America. And guess what we're going to do with that? We're going to turn you, we're going to turn you into that new financial marketplace. Because right now, we just built a whole brand new marketplace. We're turning what is called a blockchain, wherein that we're taking all the food and we're throwing it into one area, which we we give you the equipment, you lease it, you buy it, you grow the food, we buy the food back from you, you make a profit, you throw it in a blockchain, and we feed the world. Bingo. That's the direction we're going into. Yeah, and, and it's good if you, especially you a person that got land. Well, let me ask you a question. If a person mm -hmm. builds a a let's say a even a, something like a greenhouse. And they say, look, I want to put the torpedo pods all in the greenhouse. I just want a controlled environment, but I want it out here. Would that work very good in those conditions? The, the planter has been designed to use as little natural resources as possible to okay. grow what it needs to grow. So, yeah, we looked at the pressure. We looked at the electricity. We looked at so many different things that uh, within the paradigm of that particular planter. And the planter is designed, if you have soil and that soil has nutrition in it, the planter will grow your food. So, so let me ask you a question. Does it matter what kind of soil that you're using? We recommend uh, organic soil. Okay. In other words, we want something that's natural. Because a lot of viewers don't know that we ask how do, you know food grows. People don't realize the fungus in the soil, when we ask, look at a tree outside, we look at the tree and we say, geez, how in the world did that tree get so big? And what's feeding it and how is it so hard on the outside? What's, what's going on with this woody material? What we fail to realize, the fungus in the soil is providing nutrition for the tree. The tree is grown because of the fungus in the soil. And so when you use natural, any natural growing substrate, you automatically have the fungus built into uh, the soil. So you, you shouldn't have to worry about that at all. So that's, that's our approach is that you can use any soil, but you have to determine exactly uh, the soil type for the plants that you're growing. So organic soil is universal. Throw that in there. It should kick off and automatically grow. But if you want to go watermelons or maybe some beets, because we grew beets that were very large and carrots and everything else, you might want to look at your soil, amend your soil, and get the growth that you're looking for. So Peter Pot takes the soil, it breaks the soil down, and it uh, protects the plant from opposing microorganisms that are parasitical to the plants that you're trying to grow. And it eliminates all of that. At the same time, it creates a space for it to grow. Well, I, I don't I don't know about some of you, but like I said, this this just gets me excited because self-sufficiency is just what we all need to do. And I'm just telling you that some of you, you know, brothers and sisters and those of you, you know, throughout the world who watch, you know, um, you could take advantage of this, too, because this food shortages or possible threats of food shortages could be coming into your country. So, you know, you definitely hit our brother up and, and get those torpedo pies. You say, uh, brother, there, I hope you got enough of them for a lot of people. Because um, I think a lot of people will come your way with this because um, this is something that we've been needing to do a long time ago, brother.
Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to right now go outside in the because we manufacture our own planners. We manufacture our own mm -hmm. technology, our own patents. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run outside back now. And I'm going to set aside a planners for you and Kellen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I, yeah, I need, I need, I, I, I was about to say because I'm about, I need mine. I need so, mine. And so again, I, our objective is that even though we're growing food, and even though we grow that, so Peter Pie grows the healthiest food in the world mm -hmm. because you have to understand who's growing your food. It's right. the organisms that developing it, and of course you got the air and the carbon and everything else. But if you create the right environment, you don't have to add those chemicals. Because those species that are growing, those microflora that are growing your food down inside of that soil, they're doing everything you want them to do. We don't have to worry about compaction. Compaction is for dead soil. We have living organisms in your soil. Go to the torpedo pot and you'll see what's going on um, with the, the, um, the environment that we're using to actually grow your food. And I think you'll be thoroughly, all of our customers, there's not one customer who wrote back to me and said, your torpedo your torpedo pods are crap. Everybody realizes you plug your plan in and you walk away and it takes care of your business for you. Those who want to grow professionally, there is no other growing system in the world. Hydroponics, or whatever, uh, aquaponics, please don't buy that stuff. That's just that's just a virus infection waiting to happen. That's like using dead water to grow your plant. You don't want anything like that at all. That's like drinking your own urine. Get the soil. Get the purification and it'll take care of your needs. And you will, you will, your family will be fed and you will uh, have enough to last you. All right. So, so brother Dara, tell people, you know, how can they, you know, get a torpedo pod? Give them the um, website because I know some people are going to be very interested. The website, we have five different silos for the company. One is torpedopod.com and T O R torpedo T O R P E D O P O T dot com, which grows your food. We have another site called Canapot C A N A hyphen P O T. These are planters that are specifically designed to grow cannabis. We have another one called Hosplant H O S P L A N T. This is a hospital for plants. Why do we need it? Well, because it's the only planter in the world that allows you to do very deep research on your plants. Like, for instance, in your Hosplant, or in any of these planters, you can change the color, the texture, the flavor. You can change so many things about your plant. You can change different breeds or whatever you choose to do. You can make that inside the hot plant, house, house plant. And the last one is agricultural blockchain, T-U-R-A-L, agricultural blockchain. And that's where we take all of the stuff, we throw it, and we're creating an independent marketplace. That marketplace benefits you. We want to create one of the largest Afrocentric marketplaces in the world. Why? Because food is the major, it's one of the major resources that you're going to need and have. And if we build off of your food, then we can build our future off of that. When you invest in Torpedo Pot, you're investing in your future. Now, I will say this. This is more important than a Gucci belt, um, than a Louis bag, than Jordans, than iPhones, and everything else that we buy as black people, right? You can't eat those things. None of none of that's the name you could eat, right? So so we do need to, you know, invest into our sales. Because for instance, when they had like the winter storm here in Texas, mm. those who were prepared was okay. Mm. Those of you who listened in Texas were not prepared, you didn't do so well. So this is, you know, jump on this now, you know, get on it now. And also at the same time, you support you supporting your brother at the same time. So we're circling money. You know, back in the community, so that that's also a beautiful thing. Now, on the Torpedo Pie website, do they have links to all the other uh, uh, websites as well? Uh, no, they don't have links to the Torpedo Pie because we don't want to cross cannabis with Torpedo Pie because of the regulations okay. in the industry. Okay, um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, but yes, they would. Uh, if they go to the Torpedo Pie website, they'll be able to see that, and there may be a mention of Canna Pie. But and also, Phil, I just want to share one last thing uh, mm -hmm. before we go. If we move to another topic. We have over 20 distributors in the United States right now. We ship to Brazil and we ship to all countries around the world. We have, I would say our staff, um, it's got about, uh, about maybe 20 to 30 people on our staff. So what I'm trying to say is that we're building our own future. We determine rather we're going to succeed or fail. It's a business now. 
This business hires people in your community, while well, distributors, not distributors out there working. You'll see them in Atlanta. You'll see them in Pennsylvania. You'll see them over in Cleveland, Ohio. We have distributors and they're working to achieve the goals. Our goal is to take what we're trying to build and push it and integrate it into the community. So don't feel this is just one way. Understand that, you know, Mr. Addison is determined with the food process that we develop and there's nothing else in the world like it. I don't care what site you go to. I, I'm not racial, but whatever white site or black site you go to, you won't find anything like this. And we patented it. So this is a good time for you to get on board and if you want to do independent business, this is where you need to be. Build your business. Yeah, and 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 we're gonna put all those links in that pinned comment. But I say before mm -hmm. I wrap up, we got one question. I feel this is the most important question because you have a lot of knowledge about not only your product but about just a uh, you know growing food and things like that. Do you have some young you know uh, black people that you know you passing some of that knowledge to? Because the sad thing is in our community. We have somebody awesome like you and then you know life happens we all you know not gonna live forever but then we wouldn't want all that knowledge to just go on with you we want that knowledge to continue in the community so are you um you know mentoring and sharing that knowledge with the younger people um or if younger people would like to you know get with you to learn are you open to that let me tell you something sir we uh so much to answer that question We've already developed a set of uh, excuse me of children's books, mm -hmm. and these books will teach our children how to grow. And this is uh, our director of education is doing this. With that being said, I've been to a number of schools. I did a number of lectures, but more importantly, uh, and more importantly, we're building a structure. Okay, see, it's different if I just left you a book to read and then you do it yourself, but I'm building a structure. And it's the purpose of this structure is to build wealth in our communities. My community supported me and I'm supporting them. Let there be no doubt about this. This is not guess. So yeah, we're giving back in a major way because we're building infrastructure, creating jobs and opportunities, teaching people how to grow. We believe that within the inner cities right now, those are billion dollar opportunities for those who are able to take advantage of it. And so Peter Pot wants to walk you through that. So yes, we deal with uh, edu education, uh, and they call it entertainment or something like that, but we deal with education. We deal with building an infrastructure. Uh, Phil, one more last thing. When we go to farmers and we go to a farmer in any place in the country, most farmers don't know anything about agronomy. They're not experts at biology. They didn't go to school for these things. But one thing they do know is that they have a business. They have a business that they know that they can ship and put food into that business and it generates them a profit. And that's what we want to do with you. We don't need you to know a world about biology and psychology and the, the physiology of food. But if you follow our instructions as a group and as a team, we'll get to the finish line. All right. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we definitely want to thank our brother for coming, you know, today. Make sure you check out those links down below. Get you a torpedo pod. Please get you a torpedo pod because you know, all these warnings people are having, uh, we don't want you to be stuck without. Because unfortunately, when, you know, things are going down, it's really every man or woman for himself or herself. So unfortunately, so be prepared. So I say, Brother Darrell, thank you for coming on the show today. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Phil. I appreciate it. Living in America as a black person, you recognize there is one set of laws for you and one set of laws for those, especially in the white community. In our book, Passive Aggressive Racism in the System of White Supremacy, I take you through times in my life when I first started noticing white supremacy. We teach you how to recognize it, identify it, and also counter it in our book. This book is a beginner's course for those that are just starting to wake up and open their eyes to see the system of white supremacy. As a black American person, you must understand this system because this system is life or death to you. How you handle it, how you deal with it, it can affect your mental health if you don't understand this system. Pick up our book, Pass Aggressive Racism and the System of White Supremacy today on Amazon.